In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to never die on spawn again. I'm gonna show you how to make your own drop map, what advantages you can create in our spawn, as well as how you wanna go ahead and fight our spawn to make it impossible to lose. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and let's get straight into this. What a lovely little drop we've got. Every single off spawn fight in Fortnite comes down to three main fundamentals, and these fundamentals apply no matter what mode you're playing. Solos, duos, squads, trios, doesn't matter what you are doing, and also doesn't matter where you're landing, these three fundamentals are king of winning any off spawn. The first fundamental and the most simple one is just having more loot. If you get more chests than somebody, if you get better RNG out of your chests, you're more likely to win the fight. Having a better shotgun, having a sharp tooth when they only have an infiltrator, having an SMG and pushing them quickly, having more shield than them, of course, having a loot advantage if you can catalyze it on quick enough is going to help you win your spawns. However, it is not the end all be all with winning fights. The second advantage is having more mats. If somebody even has more loot than you, and you've got more mats and you know where you can farm high yield things like getting god bricks before a fight or getting pallets or getting trees before a fight, that means that you can play smarter peaks for longer, you can use your box fighting properly, you can play defensively as well, which is a really big thing, and you can force the other opponent into making mistakes because they're running low on mats. Mats are absolutely king when it comes to our spawn fights. Our third advantage is having height. Simply put, height allows you to go ahead and control the tempo of a fight. You control when you hop on somebody's wall, you control if you can get a beam to begin the fight. Having height, specifically at some drops, is really crucial, but also high ground when it comes to a fight starting and you can get above them. That means that you can control the entire way the fight is played out and it's in your hands the whole time. So now you know the three main advantages of loot, mats, and height. How do you use these to win every single off spawn? And it all comes back to earlier in the game before you even jump out the bus, which is using a drop map properly. Using a drop map is absolutely crucial for winning off spawn, but it's not the end all be all. The reason you want to use the drop map, of course, is to win those 50 50s if you get con directly, but it's also for creating more advantages over other people who aren't directly contesting you and 50 50 you. If you guys are interested in getting a drop map for literally anywhere on the map, I went ahead and partnered with Dropping Count to give you a free drop map when you sign up for either Drop Masters or for the Masterclass Unlimited Bundle. These drop maps are used by pretty much every single top tier pro. They are the world's best. It's done by a lot of high end calculations to give you the absolute best drops. But if you guys are interested in making your own drop map for whatever spot, I'll show you a very quick and simple method to do it. All you need to go ahead and do is know where you want to land, for example, right there, and then know one marker that works for your spot. For me, I know that this marker right here is perfect to give me a glide for that balcony. From there, all I want to go ahead and do is click on the actual where I'm placed on landing and draw a circle outwards on Fortnite GG. As you can see, this is going to give me a really nice circle. And basically everywhere around here that is flat is going to be a perfect glide for that exact balcony, as you can see. So all of these markers around here are going to be perfect. From there, you can go ahead and adjust it based on the elevation. So you can see here, this elevation is slightly higher. So you'd want to go ahead and move the mark back slightly. Obviously test this in game as you're playing ranked and as you're playing tournaments. You can go ahead and test this and move these markers around, figure out where is better, and you can go ahead and test it. This is a pretty accurate method to get very good drops. However, if somebody is using drop and calculator, you will still get out dropped because of just how much better those maps are and how accurate they are. So once you've got your drop map and either you've gone ahead and bought one or you're going ahead and creating your own, how do you go ahead and use it properly? There's three main steps. The first is knowing when to jump out of the bus. The second is as you jump out of the bus, which marker are you going to aim for? And then the third is how to glide correctly for that marker to hit it. This might seem really simple, but I guarantee you every single one of you watching right now at least messes up one of these simple steps. So the first one is when to jump out of the bus and that combines with which marker to choose. A lot of players end up sitting in the bus too long and that leads them getting out dropped by somebody dropping for first. A lot of also players might, let's say on a drop like this, go ahead and choose to land on a marker, let's say over here. But as you can see, that's not going to be the most efficient path to where we want to end up. The most efficient path, a straight line, is going to go ahead and be somewhere around here to give us a perfect lineup. So what I want to go ahead and do is mark exactly where the drop is correctly first of all using my drop map and then i'm going to wait for that to line up with my actual drop so as you can see there it's lined up with where i want to go and then now as i go ahead and jump out the bus i'm going to be going in a straight line from the bus to my marker to my actual drop the straight line is always the most efficient from a b and then to c now after you know which mark you're going to be aiming for so in this case it's fairly simple it's the only marker on this side that's going to give me the best drop and then of course when to jump out of the bus so for here it's going to be very early on so i can go in a straight line to the actual drop how do you go ahead and glide efficiently there's three different gliding speeds that you guys need to know about and to be using so very simply on a far bus like this this is the really simple gliding trick you need to use so i'm going to jump out of the bus pretty early on here and i'm going to look into the horizon as high up as i can while maintaining a good movement speed 
this is the optimal angle to go ahead and get. It's like looking down into the horizon. And as you can see, I'm going very quickly in the top right. And I've only got that single arrow. That means that I'm going forward very quickly. If you look a little bit too high up, as you can see, I'm actually going to slow down in the top. And I'm still, of course, not descending too much, but I'm not really going forward. You need to maintain this correct angle. Using a drop map is an extremely, extremely complicated procedure. This right here is dropping count, which basically calculates the most efficient time, as you can see. The difference here is literally only 0.1 of a second, but that can mean the difference between somebody winning a grand finals or not. A general rule of thumb when you're using a drop map is to make sure that when you're jumping out of the bus to your marker and then to your actual drop is as straight as possible. You don't want to be sitting in the bus too long as you can see here and then jumping out and then changing directions. That's going to be wasting time. And you also don't want to be going ahead and jumping out too early from the bus, gliding for too long, gliding slowly for too long and then going ahead and going to your marker. You're going to stay in the bus, jump out at around a 60 degree angle, as you can see, it's about 60 degrees, and then hit the marker that's going to give you the most straight lineup. I'd always recommend when you're playing a tournament, have a drop map open. Interested in testing out and actually using this tool right here, the dropping calculate, you get a free trial whenever you go to the link down below. And as you can see, the differences in just knowing which marker to choose is absolutely crazy. Here, you're going to get a whole, literally half a second advantage on landing compared to somebody else just by knowing when to jump out the bus. So you get that 60 degree angle as well as choosing the correct marker on this particular drop. I recently made a whole load of updated videos exactly showing how to jump out the bus, master gliding, and what to do on the approach if you guys are interested in it and you want to get more information. However, what else I have in this video will cover you for about 90% of off-spawn fights. Now, once you've gone ahead and created a drop map and you know where you're landing, it's all about creating and stacking your advantages on each other as quickly as possible. So you can see right here, I've got the best drop for this top building. And the reason I'm landing at this top building, not the one below, is because the loot is very similar, but the key thing is I have access to height as well as access to another building at the back where I can easily get more loot than the other person. As you can see, I got a free kill up there and I hear that there's two players down down to myself fighting in that building. A lot of players might be tempted to push over really quickly, but I know that other person is gonna get 150 mats and there's a lot of quick kills like floppers in that building. So it's gonna be a very even fight. However, I'm gonna be lacking 150 builds, which is probably gonna lead to me losing that fight. So what do I wanna go ahead and do? I wanna keep on stacking my advantages on each other and try to outloot the opponent while they go ahead and either heal up or while they go ahead and actually take their time and loot that building. It's all about being as efficient as possible. So take a look what I do. I go ahead, quickly farm this tree, don't break it so they don't actually know what I'm doing. And I run back here, I stop on the way to keep on creating a mat advantage, trying to overcome that 150 cypher mats they're going to get straight away off spawn. And then as I get into this building, now you can see the loot advantage starts to stack on each other because I'm getting more chests than them, I'm being more efficient than them. As I'm going to go ahead and push over here, I'm now 200 HP, I've got extra heals and I've got a really good loadout to go and win this fight. It's all about making sure your advantages stack up between each other. And of course, as the fight initiates, I'm going to make sure that I have height. And then now with a loot advantage, a mat advantage and the height advantage as the fight starts, it's going to be an easy way to clean up this fight. And the other person is going to be fairly shambles. So you can see I play the fight nice and slow. I take my time with it. And then now as they begin to show that there's shambles, I just play my peaks properly and I go ahead and win the fight really cleanly. Now, what should you do in an Osborn fight situation with there's multiple different parties landing at the same spot? It's all about deciding whether you want to engage first or whether you want to try to beat the guy coming in late third party. As you can see here, just based on my drop where I'm aiming for these barrels, I've been out dropped towards the left hand side and there's somebody on my right hand side. So I'm basically in a pinch. Whenever you're in a pinch, you need to go ahead and try to quickly kill one of the other players to you. Otherwise, you're just going to get pinched and there's not really a way you can disengage. What I do is get a bit more mats as I push over and I go ahead and play my range versus this other player who I know only as a shotgun. I reload, take my time as he mantles on me, I swing to the right so he doesn't do any damage. It's always very important to practice winning fights, start taking damage and have good movement. And then now I'm in this 1v1 situation with a player on the other side. Have I don't just want to rush over straight away with the amount of mats I've got now since the other player is likely to be 200 HP as you can see. So I do, what do I do? I go ahead and take my time, I loot up, and I make sure to loot up in a way that's not going directly towards him, but I'm going to be flanking him as he does his loot path. This is really important because it means that I'm going to be able to open the fight with a beam and take away whatever loot advantage you might have from spending more time looting compared to me. And also, I'm able to get a massive damage advantage, which is very important for closing out a fight quickly without having another third party from another area 
pushing over. As you can see here, I take my time, I spot him, I know where he is, he doesn't know where I am, and as he opens a container, I get a free kill with a twin mag just by out positioning him. In duos, the exact same fundamentals apply in off spawn fights. Having more loot, having more mats, and having height, of course, are going to be really important in a 2v2 situation. But you've got to remember, there's the additional fact that you can have team play in duos. Does it matter if you've got the best loot path, you have the best drop map, and you go ahead and get more mats than the other team? If the other team goes ahead and initiates a 2v1 really quickly off spawn, or they just try to jump one of you on your loot path, that means that you're going to be losing every single time. Let's take a look what Trulex and Chico did in the Copenhagen finals. They find one opponent who's landing near them. They get some damage advantage on him, as you can see, 90 white. And they just completely forget about TK. And Trulex just pushes straight over and tries to start this 2v1 and tries to get this initial knock. Even they take loads of damage in the process of doing this, as you can see, they're in a 2v1 situation now. They can play together. They can go ahead and play smart peaks together, which means they're guaranteed to win this next fight. Another really important aspect about duos off spawn fighting is, of course, you should be using a drop map, but you both shouldn't be aiming for the same thing. I'd recommend having two different drop maps for duos, so you're both not aiming for the exact same floor spawn, and you've got some variety of your drops. The big mistake that Thomas HD and Malibuka made in the grand finals of Copenhagen when they were contested is they're both aiming for the same floor spawn. It ended up working out well in the first day when they qualified. However, as you can see here, when they get slightly outdropped, they're both dropping for a floor spawn, which they're going to get beaten to. And Aegis is the correct thing, which is landing splits. So he's got more loot that he can potentially get, right? He's got more floor spawns, a chest spawn, as well as more floor spawns at the back he can reach. And Kanada, he outdrops here, slides onto the gun, gets that initial knock right there. And then now Aegis is going to go ahead and play with Kanada. They both go ahead and initiate this 2v1 really simply and Malibu is just completely dead in this situation. Another huge aspect of duo fighting that Misha and Tini are absolute masters at is out positioning your opponents. Whether that means knowing somebody's loot path and just camping in a chest to get a free kill as they run in, which of course takes away all those other advantages that a player might have, like having more mats or more loot, just sitting in a building, camping a chest is going to mean that you win that initial 2v1 and you can 2v1 the next person. Also, out positioning means going ahead and being able to quickly create a 2v1 and knowing how to pinch somebody, right? These guys are really good at being super aggro on a solo when they spot the opportunity to. And they're also really good at turning their attention. So you can see here, they both jump in from different angles. They're on 180 degree different angles to each other, jumping into the box, trying to quickly get this initial kill. However, they know to slow down and turn their attention to, as soon as they don't get initial kill, it's the teammate that's going to be running over. Look how they both just instinctively turn over and figure out where the teammate is and how can we go ahead and take out the team which is exactly what teeny does and now these guys are going to be stacked up in this copenhagen lobby to go ahead and have surge some of spawn situations you're gonna have a mass advantage over other players very quickly whether it's getting a pump out your first chest and mini so you can push straight away or in this case here as you can see i go ahead and out drop this other person i know there's two players lying to myself Compared to that previous example, what I want to go ahead and do is look to make a fast play happen. So I look with my SMG and I spot a free kill over here. I'm not just going for this kill, as you can see when I hit 80 white, for the one point. It's about the extra mats that I'm going to get that I'm going to use to kill the other player landing to myself. So you can see here, I push over, scroll wheel the gun, take him out, as you can see. And then now I'm super stacked to go ahead and push this other player to myself and chain eliminations together and win my spawn.